Praise the Lord. From the moment we walked in, the Lord has been speaking to us in a mighty way. Amen. Through the Psalms, if you look at Psalms 125 that we read, verse 2, it says, The Lord will surround his people with a mountain around them and will keep them in, in safety and security. From the song that we sang today uh, about how the Lord's grace is the only reason that we could all get together. There is no greater or smaller person among us. There is no difference based upon anything, but we are all at the foot of the cross. Saved sinners by grace. And we will continue studying this portion, the new and the living way. This is the, for the new uh, and the visitors, this is a portion that we've been studying, the new and the living way. And uh, we have had a chance to look at the new covenant. We are all under this new covenant. The Lord has given us new birth for anyone who wants to uh, come into this family. Uh, they can uh, accept the name of the Lord Jesus uh, and uh, live for him, a new birth. Then we talked about a spiritual heart transformation, a new heart. And the last many weeks, we've been talking about a new fruit. And we started the last couple of weeks talking about the new family. And today, we will stay on this topic of this new family as we study from the Word of God. You know, when you think or when you hear someone say, uh, what is the family of God, what do you normally think about? What is the family of God? Now, you might think of a community of believers that you, do, um, that you do life with. You might think about the local church that you're a part of, like Hebron. Or you might think of the Big C, the global church that has, what, 2.3 billion out of the 8 billion people in the world are professing Christians. Um, so there are many ways that you can think of the family of God. But any way you think about it, we, the things that we learn today will be practically applicable to that. But specifically, I'd like to talk about the local church and the benefit of being plugged into a local church and all the benefits and uh, things that come out of that in our new family. Amen? Amen. Uh, let me tell you by starting a real story. You know, uh, I, I don't know, most of you know that my parents moved here about eight years ago, and before that we were in New York. And before we were in New York, uh, uh, my parents used to be teachers in Nelambur, uh, which is in Malabar. Um, I was a young boy then, uh, in under 10 years of age, and there was uh, a man that was living across the way from us. He was a Brahmin a young man, and he came to the Lord. I won't mention his name here, but uh, he came to the Lord uh, through a, a miraculous way, and uh, he was looking for a place to worship. And uh, he was seeking and could not find anybody that uh, was uh, a believer that would be in community with him. And then uh, somehow he found out that the person that lives on the other side of you is uh, a Bible-believing Christian. And so uh, this young man started to come around the house and he was uh, uh, joined the church family that we were part of. I was still a young boy at that time, so I don't, um, I'm hearing uh, and remembering some things, but he uh, became part of the family, and he uh, built and found community in that church in Malabar. You know, there's not too many Christians back then. This is 40 years ago uh, in Nalambur. And uh, eventually, this young man uh, and his wife dedicated themselves to full-time ministry, and they were able to go to Dara Dun to study the Bible, and then they taught the Bible for another 30 years or so, now they're retired and back in Kerala. And uh, why am I bringing this up? You know, uh, many of you know that me and my sister are the two biological children of my parents, but many times I hear them calling and uh, commenting that the spiritual parents are my parents. And so each one of us has uh, many, many children that are spiritual children that we could have. Amen? We talk about three fathers, the Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father, we talk about them. We talk about spiritual fathers, and we can talk about earthly fathers, and the fathers that we are born into. The sermon topic today is, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. 
The blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. You might have heard that blood is thicker than water. You might have heard the hashtag fam bam. People might put their family get togethers and say hashtag fam bam. But let me tell you, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. As we sang and as we heard about the testimony of Pastor V.A. Thumbi, uh, who just passed away, we heard that his mother and father forsook him. And the same thing happened to this young man who came to the Lord from the Brahmin background. Um, when your mother and your father forsake you, God will take care of you. Amen. And that is what is supposed to happen in true, genuine community in a church. So my church, my new family, or for those of you who understand Malayalam, I was thinking about this. We're all part of a new family, the Kurishin Mutal family, at the foot of the cross. Amen. Amen. So if people ask you, what's your family in India, and you don't know, you can say that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So God has placed us, uh, a group of believers here in Oklahoma, of all places. I thought that I would never end up in Oklahoma. <laughs> and uh, the Lord arranged it in such a way that all of the jobs when I was done with my fellowship in New York were closed and opened a door for me and in, in fact uh, recruited me out here uh, in a great way that I came out to Oklahoma and many of you have your stories as to why you're in Oklahoma a group of believers from India a small place in India called Kerala most of you that have that are here in Oklahoma and getting together as a church family as IPC Hebron you know, a couple of years ago, we had a, a t-shirt even that uh, said, what did it say? Hebron, Hebron Kudumbam. Hebron family. We love because he first loved us. The love of Christ in community. Amen. That is what we are here for. And so we will learn a little bit more about my new family. So let's learn about what is a church. A church is not a place you go to. It's not an event you attend. So if someone asks you, where are you going, and you tell them church, is that true? It's not a building, right? It's not a place you go to. But a church is a spiritual family. It's a group of born-again believers who have joined forces to live together as a family in commitment to each other to fulfill God's promise in their life. That is the whole point of us getting together. It's not a social club. It's not a place to uh, make your name great because we are all on the same footing. Uh, we are at the foot of the cross because each and every person here, whether you look different, whether you're taller or shorter, whether you are uh, more educated than or not, we all got to this place at the foot of the cross and the grace that we were singing about is the only reason that each and every person is here. If you look at Acts chapter 2, you see the first New Testament church, which is the first century Jerusalem church. And we see that there were believers, an authentic community that came together. We see that uh, after Peter has preached, 3,000 more people were added to the church. And there were now thousands of believers. And all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship and sharing with meals, so there's fellowship involved, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. And they worshiped together at the temple each day, met in the homes uh, uh, for the Lord's Supper, and shared their meals with great joy and generosity. You'll see multiple aspects of what God and Jesus intended the church to be uh, in that portion that we will get to at the end. So the church is God's own family. And God wanted a family uh, that he could have communion with. It wasn't like God was lonely and he needed someone. But it, uh, in, in time, God in his sovereign will decided to make man. And he wanted to have communion with man. So this idea of a church or a spiritual family is uh, there in the creation of God, while God created the whole universe, it is part of his creation that he created man in a special way to have fellowship. And the whole reason that we are here is to fulfill God's purpose and have communion with him. Amen. In 1 Peter 1 verse 3, it says, God has given us the privilege of being born again so that now we are members of God's own family. Amen. Amen. In 1 Timothy 3.15, it says, that family or a household 
is the church of the living God. And the support and the foundation uh, comes from the truth, which is the Lord Jesus. Jesus, uh, the one in the triune God, left his glories above as we were singing. And he came down into the earth and he became that ladder, that bridge, in order for us to be uh, at the foot of the cross. He, uh, who knew no sin, uh, uh, was uh, killed for us. If when you think about that, you can't be quiet. Amen. You have to give him the praise. That is the only reason we are here. Ephesians 1 verse 4 and 5 says, Long ago, even before the world was made, God chose us, uh, God chose us to be his very own through Christ, through what we would do. It was in God's plan that each one of us would be adopted into the family of God. You know, when we studied Ephesians uh, systematically, we talked about ador adoption in, in a great detail. But God has adopted each and every one that has accepted the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior as his own. And we are the children of God. And when the children of God get together so that their lives, a group of believers who have joined forces to live as a family in commitment to see uh, the purposes of God for their life, that is known as a church. So Christ gave his life and died for his bride, which is the church. And the church is the only thing on earth right now that will last forever and ever. We see that in the Bible. Not all the things of this world, all the uh, expensive companies, expensive, uh, luxurious things, all of those things will pass away. That, uh, but the only thing that will not pass away is the church. Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. He died that, he, that we could give, uh, we could be his bride in all her beauty. It says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and 27. He died so the church could be pure and without fault. And I think someone said it earlier. Uh, it is only by not our merit, not our holiness, not our ability, but the righteousness of God that is imputed upon us that we can be holy and pure. So that also is a level footing for all of us. Ephesians 3.21 says, Glory will belong to God and his church and uh, for all eternity and all time. And in 1 Thessalonians it says, At the second coming, we will be with the Lord together forever and ever. So the church is not just a concept that uh, will end on earth, but it is a concept that will go on forever and ever. And I'm talking about the big C church here, uh, not this building. The building might be under uh, brimstone and fire when uh, the, the second coming happens or, or there could be uh, something that happens, but the big C church will be the two point something billion people, the ones that are truly saved in that number will last forever and ever, amen. amen. We can look at Matthew chapter 12, verse 46 to 50. And it's also in Mark chapter 3, verse 32 to 35. We see that Jesus was speaking to the crowd and his, mother's, uh, his mother and brothers uh, stood outside asking to speak to him. And this is a portion that we're familiar with. And someone went to Jesus and said, your mother and your brother are standing outside and they want to speak to you. And what did Jesus say? It might seem harsh. He said, who is my mother and who are my brothers? Then he pointed to his disciples and said, look, these are my mother and my brothers and my sisters. Anyone who does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Amen. So to obey God's commandment and to have uh, that personal relationship with him is the closest and the most intimate family uh, that we can have and relationship with Jesus, he says. If we do the will of the Father that has sent him. He said he and his fa Father uh, are one and the, and the ones who believe in him will also be part of that family. So uh, knowing the will of the Father, obeying God and his commandments given through the word is how we can have a close and intimate relationship with the Lord. Amen. So uh, if you look, and I hopefully you've understood that the church should be seen as our family. It's not just something we have on a t-shirt, but it is something that should be lived out uh, that is part of our family. So when we say Hebron family, uh, there should be some weight behind that. We call each other brothers or sisters uh, of the foot of the cross. Amen? Amen. Yes. Uh, church family 
does not mean that human families don't have their importance. It doesn't compete so much, but it is a collaborator with the family of God, right? So the word of God clearly says that the husband has certain duties, the wife has certain duties, the children are to obey their parents, that you need to take care of your uh, parents when they're older. There are certain things that are said in the word of God, and that is still true. So our blood relations, whether it's through genetics, is still important, but nothing will top the relationship we have, which is the relationship we have with the Lord Jesus if you're still doubting it, it is open to anyone, not by genetics, but by faith in him alone and him alone. Amen. And the verses are there. Everyone who believes in him and accepts him, he gives the right to be children of God. Galatians 3.9 says, all who put their faith in Christ share the blessings of Abraham received because of his faith. You know, there was a time when only the Israelite people were called the children of God or the family of God. But by Jesus coming into this world and giving his life for us, we, the Gentiles, each and every person sitting here, I believe, is a Gentile, not of Jewish mother. Uh, and we can say that we have also the right to be putting our faith in Christ. We have the right to be the children of God, although we are not Jewish. There's another important point uh, that Jesus, as our older brother, and that we are fellow heirs with Christ. In Hebrews 2.11, it says, Jesus, who makes people holy, and those who are made holy from the same family, he is not ashamed to call him his brothers and sisters. So Jesus, the, ones, the one who makes us holy, if we are able to trust in him and get the righteousness of not our own merit, but of the Lord, then he calls us brothers and sisters. In Romans 8.29, he says, Jesus would be the firstborn born among many brothers and sisters and we have received the spirit of adoption into the family of God that we can cry out to the father God Abba father and Jesus is the mediator that has allowed us to come to the father through Jesus he suffered so that we might also be glorified with him amen Jesus is the king of kings and the lord of lords as it says in Psalms there so one last thing before I move on there. One of the final prayers of Jesus, we talked about the uh, upper room discourse in John 17, when Jesus first prays for himself before he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, and then he prays for his disciples, and then he prays for all the disciples that would ever come. So Jesus prayed for you and me as part of the family of God. And he said, I am praying not only for these disciples in front of me, but also for those who will believe in me through their message. I pray that they will be one, just as you and I are one. As you are in me, Father, I am also in you, that you may be in us so that the world will believe that you sent me. One of the essential duties of the church, uh, as we'll see, is spreading the good news of the gospel to others. And how can we do that? People have to see this, what Jesus prayed for in us, which is the greatest and perfect unity and love that emanates out of us. If you see verse 23, it says, may they experience such perfect unity in the world that they will know who sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. By our unity, and we heard that at uh, OPYF when Tom spoke on, uh, Friday, uh, on Saturday night, he said uh, about how we need to be in perfect unity as the OPYF team here has also chosen unity as our main theme. And also, by the love of Christ emanating through us, the world will see. And that is the prayer of Jesus for each one of us, that we would be as a church in unity and showing the love of the Lord to each one of us, uh, to each one that is in here and to the ones that are outside of here in the church. So my church is my family, and at the foot of the cross, at the Kurishan Mutal family, at the foot of the cross, we are all on a level playing field. We have nothing to boast about. We are all sinners saved by grace. And in the kingdom of God, we, uh, our relational priorities, our family priorities, while it's still important, it might be shifted a bit, uh, a bit and it says that I am my brother's keeper. You know, in a society in the U.S. that uh, talks about rugged individualism, the Word of God is all about community and relational accountability. And there is many reasons 
to be plugged into a physical church, and for those of you listening, not just to a virtual church. The church is a family that will help me focus on God. So coming together every few days uh, will help me refocus on God. It will, it will help me face life's problem. And we know that no man is an island. That as you go through problems, as you inevitably will go through problems, there is not a human being that doesn't have any problems. The church and being plugged into a local church and having community is important to face life's problems. It helps to strengthen my faith. I hear the testimonies and the faith of others, and I am able to grow and become stronger in my faith. And it also helps me make a, dif make a difference. And I thank God for all the volunteers that, uh, that plug themselves in to different things and are able to uh, find their uh, gift and talents and use it for the Lord. It also helps me in my purpose and mission, which is to bring others and tell others about Christ. So if you go back to the Acts chapter 2 church, you will see that the first and the most distinctive quality they had was they had a sincere heart of worship and they had a real authentic community. They lived among people that cared for each other. They supported each other. And whenever life was crashing down, there were other people to help support them. You didn't have to pretend to be somebody else. You didn't have to be, uh, and you can come as you are, and you're able to have real authentic community. It prioritized the spiritual growth. They were faithful stewards in what they were given in their resources, and they had a quality of a heart for the lost or evangelism. Time is running out, so let me uh, summarize this part. The worship team can come on up. Um, so let me summarize what is the church family, and I put that as F-A-M-I-L-Y, family. We have a faithful father. We have a faithful father who wanted a family. That is our eternal father in heaven, S-E-F. We are adopted into the family of God. Everyone who believes on the Lord Jesus is adopted into the family of God. We are members of the household of God whether it's the community of worshipers that you uh, uh, have within the church or the church, local church family in its entirety or the big C, the church, we are members of the household of God. We are to influence the world around us, the I. And with, L and, uh, with the L, there is love and unity we need to show others. And as we yearn, as we yearn for the second coming of the Lord, uh, we eagerly wait as families, as a church family, for the return of the Lord. Amen. So as I conclude, there's a couple of songs that came to mind. You know, an older hymn from Bill Gaither that said, I'm so glad I'm part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Join hairs with Jesus as we travel this earth, for I'm part of the family, the family of God. There's a newer song by the Newsboys that says, there's a message to the saints. The table has been set, so take your place. There's no more condemnation. There's only grace. We're family. Colors and stains disappear. You belong here. You're the family of God. No matter how you came in through this door, you're not an orphan anymore. You've been adopted into the blood of Christ. And you have brothers and sisters sitting by the side of you that have been in the same boat, adopted, and you are able to pour into the life of others. I know this is a multi-generational, multicultural, uh, well, multi-language church, and there could be barriers that we could say will prevent us, but I'm glad that we have discipleship, we have mentorship going on, and I, I pray that in the coming days that there will be continual chain uh, where the older folks the older women, the older men would be able to pour into the lives of the middle-aged ones and the middle-aged ones will be able to pour into the lives of the younger ones and the, and, and the college-aged ones and they could pour into the lives of the, the younger one. I know the young people are already doing that, but I pray that there will be continued wisdom and mentorship, that we have an authentic, loving community uh, that we already have, but we can build on. And for any that are I feel led to say this, that are feeling like you come here, but you haven't been able to connect. I pray that you're able to 
say hello to others and that you're able to connect and there would be real community in the family of God, not just in the genetic family that you are born into, which you had no choice over. May God bless you all with these words. Amen.